say what? I was not known to them. And so they say, you see, Abraham didn't know the name of Yahweh. Uh, Yitzchak didn't know the name of Yahweh. Yaakov didn't know the name of Yahweh. So you don't need to know the father's true name to have a personal, intimate relationship with him. Because in Shemot 6.3, Yahweh says to Moshe, Hey, I am introducing myself to you as Yahweh, but Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they didn't know me as Yahweh. They knew me as El Shaddai. Have you ever heard that talk? Huh? That's still taught. That's always taught. And there's a group out there that I call the stubborn refuseniks. <laughs> they refuse to realize that it is impossible. Turn your neighbor and say impossible. impossible. Let's try that again. Impossible. impossible. It is impossible that the patriarchs of Israel before Moshe did not know Yahweh's true name. And if you have a Bible that says, Lord, go home, look it up in your concordance. It says, Yud, He, Vav, He, the sacred tetragrammaton, Yahweh. Are you with me? Amen. And so the Hebrew says, Amen. I appeared, listen, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, as El Shaddai, Yahweh, and by my name Yahweh, I was not known to them. There it is. There goes the true name movement. We teach that everybody has to know the name of Yahweh to have the desired, intimate, personal relationship with Yahweh. Are you with me? But it appears that we're wrong because in most translations it says, but by my name Yahweh or the Lord, I was not known to them. <coughs> Indicating or connotating or insinuating that everybody before Moses, Moshe, did not know the true name. Okay, how many have a King James with you or an NIV? That's what it says. By my name Yahweh. Is that what it says, brother? By my name the Lord, I was not known to them. Jehovah. By my name Jehovah, I was not known to them. Okay? So the point is, I was not known to them. So the insinuation, or the, those who say, well, hey, you don't have to know the true name. What's this, what's this true name stuff? And that's what this, what this afternoon's message is. What's all about this true name stuff? What's all about this sacred name stuff? What's, what's this all about? Abraham didn't need it. Isaac didn't need it. Jacob didn't need it. What's all this, what's all this new sacred name stuff? I'm going to prove to you today, clearly, that is not what the text says. These people insist this verse proves none of the patriarchs knew Yahweh's name. Are you with me? Yeah. They go on, listen, to reason that, that, that the patriarchs were obviously redeemed believers. So as such, it is not necessary to use or know or call on Yahweh's name in their walk, and they use the patriarchs as an example saying, this verse says that Moshe was the first to know Yahweh's name. Okay? Now it does appear to say that. Even in the Hebrew. If you know a little bit of Hebrew. Even in the Hebrew it appears to say that. It says, Aval bishmi Yahweh, but by the name of Yahweh, lo no dati lahem, I was not known to them. It appears in the Hebrew, that's not only in the, in the bad translations of the English, the King James and the NIV, but even in the Hebrew, it appears Yahweh is saying that Moses, you're privileged. Moshe, you're special. Moshe, you're right up there. Moshe, you're selected. Moshe, you're a servant. Moshe, you are, I'm specially selecting you because you are the first one. Turn to your neighbor and say first one. First one. Let's try that again. First one. first one. You are the first one to learn the true memorial, redemptive, eternal name of Yahweh. And we've heard that. And today there are people in the Messianic movement and the so-called Christian church that teach the same thing. They teach and they insist that you don't need to know the name of Yahweh because Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov didn't know it and they were redeemed and they were Yahweh's people and they were saved and they were born again and they were walking with Yahweh and Yahweh cut a covenant with Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, right? So if Yahweh cut a covenant with them and redeemed them and, and dealt with them and walked with them, then and they and, and they didn't need the true name, then glory to you know who. Let's stick with Hashem. <laughs> oh go, Toad, Senor, Christus, Lord, Senor, God, Shmod, Lord, Toad. Pick the title, it doesn't matter because it didn't matter to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so that's what they teach, that's what they insist, that's where they're stuck. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. 
Hallelujah. They claim that our demand, the true name believers like ourselves, who teach this name as, as, as essential to having a relationship with Yahweh, is not scriptural. They also claim this same camp. Turn to your neighbor and say, same campo. Same campo. Let's try that again. Mismo campo. Mismo campo. They say, if Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob didn't need the name of Yahweh, then we don't need the name of Yahweh. Plus, it doesn't matter anyway, because Yahweh doesn't really mean you have to know his name. His name represents his character. And then they start doing arm gyrations. His character. It doesn't really mean his name, Dodo, silly bird. Yahweh is talking about his character. Everything about his character. Everything about his, his inner fortitude. All his attributes. All his manifestations. His personifications are found and intertwined inextricably and inexplicably. And yeah, almost mystically. In his name. And Yahweh is not talking about a name that he wants his people to be stuck on. He wants his people to call on. He wants his people to use. He's talking about his character. His character. So when Yahweh says my name, it's my character, my holiness, my, my eternality, my omnipresence, my omniscience, my, my, um, uh, my, my, my all-encompassing resurrection power. So that the name is not really a name coming from human lips. How many have gotten this garbage? Turn to your neighbor and say, merely garbage. Well, you go on the Miami Beach Israel Revival and they insist that you use the name. Well, hey, according to Exodus 6.3, Moshe was the first one to know his name. So if Abraham, Isaac, Jacob didn't need his name, why do you? And anyway, Yahweh doesn't really mean a name as if he doesn't understand when people call on other names. You ever get that one? Are you telling me Yahweh doesn't understand when people call on other names or other titles or substitute titles like Hashem or when they substitute Adonai for Yahweh or when they substitute Lord for Yahweh or when they substitute Senor for Yahweh? He understands anyway. He understands. He's a gracious, merciful, loving Yahweh who is slow to anger, showing mercy and love for a thousand generations to those who love him and fear him. Right? Wrong. <laughs> he understands. You ever get that one? He understands. You're such a religious fanatic. You're such a legalist. You're such. You're sticking to the letter of the law, forgetting the heart of the law. Justice, mercy. Go and learn what. The, didn't Yeshua say, "Go and learn what this means"? I would have mercy and justice rather than sacrifice. And all you Yahweh people, you're always stuck on the letter of the name Yahweh. And if you slip up and you say, go, toad, Lord, or Jesus, he understands he's a loving, caring, heavenly father. And P.S., he's not really talking about a word, since he understands and is the author of all word. He's talking about his character. When he speaks of his name, he's talking about his character. You ever get that? Turn to your neighbor and say, did you ever get that? Yeah. Yeah. Ask your neighbor. You, you've gotten that, haven't you? Yeah. Oh, man. We've gotten that, haven't we? Okay. Now, is that what Yahweh is saying? No. He is saying what he is saying. He means what he says and says what he means. You know, we, I came out of the Sunday system and I learned, he, you know, Yahweh said it, I believe it, and that settles it. Wrong. It don't matter if you believe it or not. Yahweh said it, it's settled. Whether you believe it or not. Amen. Amen. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. And so that's what we want to do in the Miami Beach Israel Revival. We want to take you away from being brainwashed. Okay? Because you're gonna, you're gonna, you, you've got to have your heart and your mind washed. All right? You're either going to have it washed with true and correct doctrine, or you're going to have it wrong doctrine. People say to me, what's the main goal of the Miami Beach Israel Revival? It's to brainwash you. Absolutely. It's to wash your brain, your mind, your heart, and turn it from a Greco-Roman mindset into a Hebraic mindset to understand the hearts, the words, the character, the mission, the life, and the vision of the author of Scripture. Somebody! Now, your ex-pastor and your ex-bishop and your ex-superintendent, whatever that is, I want to be a superintendent. I'm tired of being a rabbi. I want to be a superintendent. <laughs> All right, they told you, oh, it wasn't necessary. Don't go to that Miami Beach group because if they're right, how come the place isn't filled? Oh, yeah.